What else do I gotta do? From 30,000 feet above the Sea of Cortez, you can't see any fish. But try telling that to Mark Martin. Every time I looked over, he was scanning the water below. And somewhere on a plane not far behind us, I knew Alex Beck was doing the exact same thing. Me? All I saw was 14 days on the moon. The southeast coast of Baja, Mexico is about as remote a place you'll ever want to go. Searing heat, few people, and almost no rainfall at all. This is the first day of everything. We've got probably a long night ahead of us of rigging rods, trying to figure out all our gear between three people. Get ready for tomorrow. But if you're a fly fisherman, a really determined fly fisherman. This is the beginning of God knows what, but it's the beginning of something very special. This is heaven on earth. Or hell, depending on the day. I watched Alex and Mark lay out their gear like some special forces guys on a mission. Every choice was calculated, methodical. Then it struck me, we're not going fishing. We're going hunting. Our quarry was Nematistius pectoralis, better known as the roosterfish. And if anyone knew about the roosterfish and what it took to catch one, it was Bill White, owner of the Papagayo Fishing Lodge. For the fisherman that's really serious and to take on rooster, you, you need to be. A few things have to fall in place for the best of the best to have a chance. I still don't have anything out of the 20s that I've landed. So, you know, I'm still looking for that 40 pound fish. Alex and Mark didn't come 2,000 miles for just any rooster. It had to be a grande, big daddy of them all. Our first rooster wasn't exactly a grande, but it was a start. This was by far the best day of action and day one. For your fisherman who likes to fish, it is not all about catching fish, and today was one of those days. We had a fantastic day, we didn't catch shit. Oh, good morning, good morning, sunbeam, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, man. There's two basic parts of fishing. There's finding the fish and catching the fish. As yesterday proved, they don't always go hand in hand. 
But this was a new day, and we were nothing but optimistic. We had a pretty good day out there today. Um, but there's one thing we got to talk about right off the bat, and that is we did have a chance at a grande today. I could cry all night in sorrow. I could moan all day in pain. And the grande was hooked, and the grande was fought. And then we just got a bit caught up in the moment. Well, we did absolutely what we know we shouldn't have done. And we hopefully will never do it again. I'll teach him. Hey, Mark. Wait. Then someone grabbed the line. And uh, tried to leader it. And we lost the fish. It just happened. Fish made a move, line broke, and it was over. The lesson learned today was when landing a rooster fish, beach them. Use the waves, back up. You don't grab these fish while they're in the water. Not sure how that's gonna play out. I'm not sure if I will still be alive tomorrow. Um, I'm kind of scared to go to sleep. But all in all, in the end, my friend forgave me. And uh, that's what it's all about. You can only grind so much sand through an ATV before something gives out. For us, it was stripped lug nuts. If I hadn't seen the rear wheel wobbling when I did, Alex and Mark would probably still be in a Mexican hospital. We were miles from home base with no cell phones and just enough water to limp our way back. The whole day was shot. We needed a plan B. It came in the form of a 10-year-old Frankenstein that taxed every mechanical brain cell we had. But if we could get it running by dawn, we were back in business. We needed a plan C. Three guys on one ATV would have gotten us arrested in the States. But this was Mexico. And besides, we came here to fish. Nothing was going to get in the way of that. Nothing. As it turns out, rooster fish like to screw with your head. They'll make you think you've got them, only to find out they got you. I actually saw a rooster today open his mouth and we heard him suck in the water through his gills and wasn't there. The next day, the sea turned into a desert. Not a sign of life anywhere. We must have changed locations a dozen times. The result was always the same. Nada. Then came the wind.
physical demands of running on coarse sand mile after mile, day after day, was beginning to take its toll. Dave Rooster's moving left to right. He's turning on it. It's, uh, you know, it's starting to really become work. Doing what Alex and I are doing is, you know, with the sun beating down on you, it's, it's grueling. By this point, even Mark and Alex were wondering what the hell was going on. There truly were fish today that I saw moving left to right, right to left, whatever, that I would take a cast at them and then I, uh, I would just want to leave them alone. I'd be like, okay, go fuck yourself. Yeah, I know you're not going to turn on my fly. After a while, it really wears on you. Had our good karma left us? Actually, it was worse than that. Way worse. We had what the locals call salado. The curse. Salado doesn't announce its arrival. There's no bolt of lightning from above. We're the victims of theft. Chicken is, uh, chicken's gone. What are we gonna eat? Tequila? It just sort of creeps up on you. One bad thing after another. What we needed was a good dose of advice. And booze. Oh, no, it was totally it. mixed up. Yeah. Yeah, you if anyone knew how to get out of Salado, it was Bill's old fishing buddies, Curdo and Wookie. These guys had gone through every triumph and tragedy a rooster could throw at you. They shared things with us they normally wouldn't share with anyone. But this wasn't a normal night. Alex and Mark learned a ton that night. The question was, would they remember it in the morning? With our new knowledge and a few custom-made flies from Curdo, we set out for the water yet again. Much has been said about the art of fly fishing. The beauty of the cast, the solitude. What I noticed most though was how much spirit it required. What else would keep a man coming back after thousands of casts and no fish to show for it? Spirit. Sheer determination. broken the curse of Salado, it was only because Mark Martin and Alex Beck were two of the most stubborn human beings on the planet. All we needed now was a grande. What we got was another dead ATV. Salado hadn't left us after all. As Mark tinkered with the electrical system, Alex went looking for help. It took him five hours to find a mechanic willing to make the trip, and a little side trip of his own. What else? 
else do I got to do? The morning of our last day began the way all new days begin. I guess hope really does spring eternal. But once the good luck charms have been rubbed, we had to face reality. With the wind roughing up the seas, our chances of even spotting a grande were slim. Still, we had to try. With everything going on these past two weeks, I didn't realize how caught up I'd gotten in Alex and Mark's quest. And now with the prospect of fulfilling their dream in doubt, I couldn't help but feel bad for them. We had all the sand in the world, yet the hourglass was running out. This had been Mark and Alex's fourth trip to Baja, but they'd be coming back. Five, six, ten more times, if that's what it took to land the big one. Because long ago, they made a pact. The kind of pact only best friends can make. If it was any consolation, Bill was cooking up his famous farewell dinner that night. Maybe a cool shower and some tequila would wash the taste of disappointment out of our mouths. Big fish, left to right. Yep. proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. To that I would only add, if you go together, bring a cameraman. Because some fish stories are true. Soy un hombre muy honrado que me gusta lo mejor Las mujeres no me faltan ni el dinero ni el amor Jineteando en mi caballo por la sierra yo me voy Las estrellas y la luna ya me dicen dónde voy Ay, 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 amor Ay, ay, morena de mi corazón 